had, um, the number of breast cancer death cases in 1970. I mean, by the time you try to find it, I guess you can already be bored and you just give up and try to work on something a little bit more productive. However, I took it a step further. As a student assistant here, I thought, why not be able to use the program provided here to be able to manipulate this data and be able to use it as a more productive, a more, I guess, engaging sort of presentation. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn all these numbers into some <coughs> okay? So my project is basically about taking numbers and putting them into representations, not only easily more comprehensible for us to look at, but to look at these trends and to look at things that usually you don't see. And the big question everyone asks, the first question that everyone asks when they come to me is, what's my chance of getting cancer? What's my chance of dying of cancer? And to best represent that would be these bubble charts here. The bubble charts show two different variables. It shows us your chances of being diagnosed with cancer and your chances of dying with cancer. The darker these circles are, it's a higher percentage. And the larger the circle, the higher chance of dying from it. Now, I can press on, Dr. Eman, can you pick a cancer from men, any kind of cancer? <laughs> okay, colon cancer. I'm actually able to press on this, and I can see that there's an 8% chance of dying or an 8% chance of being diagnosed with cancer. Now, if I were to look at the chart before, you could see that first I have to find colon, then I have to find either if it's a diagnosis rate or a death rate, and then know what the number is. But all I did was press on colon, and it's only both at the same time. That's the same thing for women. That's one way how Lois helped us out. Now, a trend that you see, lung cancer is the largest circle up there. And I thought to myself, if lung cancer has a high percentage of being, you know, dying from, what's my chance, what, how many deaths have, you know, been caused by lung cancer? So I'm gonna play a little simulation here for you. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna graph 70 years worth of cancer deaths. You can see that the lines are steadily constant until it gets about this area, 1950s, 1960s. And then one line jumps up dramatically. That purple line right there. That purple line happens to be lung cancer. So basically what's happening is we're seeing that over time, there is an increase in the number of lung cancer deaths. Now what I can do, this is pretty interesting, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight 1990 to 2000. In 10 years time, almost 3.3 million people have died of lung cancer. Now you can't see that on that chart from before, because all it's showing is your year and the number of people that have died. I just showed you 10 years worth of data just by swiping on the screen. Another great thing about this is I'm able to isolate whatever kind of cancer I want. So we're going to go back to colon cancer. What I'm actually able to do is pick whatever year I want, from 1930, let's go to 1990, and I can look at my data from 1930 to 1990. Maybe I want to compare colon cancer to liver cancer, see if there's a correlation between the two. There is no correlation between the two appointments. That's one of the greatest things about Tableau. I can manipulate my data so that I can make it any constant make it any variable, make it any way I want it to, and still look presentably appealing. Now, there was a presenter that was supposed to be with me, unfortunately he couldn't make it today. And he's a student at the University of Georgia, and one of his main projects that he'd love to do is work with the University of Georgia's Miracle Network. And he helps children, if you guys don't know, he helps children raise money, you know, raise money to help with children diseases. So that made me wonder, so far I've been talking about adult cancers, but what about, you know, the children cancers? And thanks to him, I got published in a journal uh, for this edition in uh, my data. So being able to compare both children cancers to adult cancers, and I greatly am grateful for that. But what I've done here was graphed the chances of you getting or dying of cancer, but if your age is 19 or less. These blue bars over here represents children, or adolescents rather, between 15 and 19. And the orange represents children at birth to 14. They all have something in common. They all have cancers I can't pronounce. I mean, they all have cancers that are embryotic. They're cancers that are, they're cancers that form before the baby is born. I mean, for example, rhabdomyosarcoma. Does anyone know what rhabdomyosarcoma is? 
I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that. Right. So, with Tableau, I'm actually able to put a description to these complicated variables, if you will. So I want to look at adolescents and see what percentage of them get rhabdomyosarcoma. So I see that not only is it a 1% chance of getting rhabdomyosarcoma, rhabdomyosarcoma is cancer that forms in, in these very small tissues of our muscles, the, stri the, the striated muscles. Another valuable thing about Tableau, not only being able to graph and isolate my data, not being able to compare two different variables, but being able to describe what my variables are, that's a great value. The last thing that I want to talk about before I turn it over for questions is a key factor, I think, in my opinion. All of this data so far was just a generic sort of format. Nothing was, it didn't identify something specific, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So my two maps, I have the map of the world over there, and I have the map of the U.S. over there. I am now giving data a geolocation. Now, one other thing that's really important, a diverging scale. Now, to me, I've never heard of a diverging scale, because a diverging scale, I think, is, I didn't even know what I wanted to think during that time. But what a diverging scale is, is being able to compare two extreme contrasts, being able to see a low probability or a low spectrum to a high spectrum or a high probability. So I'm going to start with this map first. What I see is I have a green and a red. My green is representing a percentage of people who are diagnosed or have died with cancer in proportion to the number of people in that state. So basically I'm comparing people who, have, who are identified as a cancer patient whether they have died of cancer or whether they are that actually have cancer to the population of the state. And I'm giving it in these percentages. Green being the low end of the spectrum and red being the high end. So what do I see? I see the northeast, all red. I see over here all green. And I see everywhere except for Georgia red. I'm not surprised, but um, what does this mean? I had to investigate because I'm a little confused as to why you have the northeast red. And why do you have the over here green, the southwest? So one of the many cases is the fact that there's a greater population in the northeast than in these states. There's also more uh, institutions that actually can diagnose you of cancer in the northeast than in states like New Mexico and Utah and Arizona. Now California is an exception. I'm going to show you California's data for a second. There are 38 million people that live in California. But only 172,000 people, roughly, are cancer patients. So either dying of cancer that this past year, or have been diagnosed with cancer. So you saw that percentage. I'm going to pull it up again. 0.44%. So almost, you could say roughly half of a percent of people are, di are basically identified as cancer, a cancer patient. That's a large population. Now, if I wanted to compare Kansas, there's only roughly 3 million with a population of only, uh, with a number of cases at 14,000. Population is, I think, the key variable in this map. Because the larger the population, usually it's going to produce a smaller percentage when you're dividing math. I'm a psychology major, so I'm not going to do that math in my head right now. But, so, the other question. The southeast. Why is it that most of the states are red? Melanoma. For those that don't know what the melanoma is, it's the most dangerous type of skin cancer. You can blame spring break for that. But Georgia, apparently, it's pretty interesting about Georgia. Georgia's dad is doing But Georgia, it I don't know how to explain this. It's pretty interesting what the data provided me from the National Institute of Health and the American Cancer Society. They have different numbers in different cases. There were less melanoma cases than the other states. And then there were more, I guess, rare cases in Georgia than in the other states. No data, no research is supporting it. Why? Because they're still investigating it. But other than that, Georgia's Georgia. I can't, I mean, that might be the best research for my hand. 
Um, other than the different institutions, uh, the Northeast is heavily read because of an idea of a westernization sort of scenario. Being able to come from a developing country to a developed country, and having a developed country scenario has some characteristics that I think it's really common for us, but seems confusing unless it's explained. If you are westernized, you're experiencing ideas like smoking, alcohol, obesity. Simple ideas that, yeah, it exists here, there's a lot here, but you never think that these simple ideas are carcinogens. They actually can cause cancer. Let's broaden our scope for just a minute. Let's look at the U.S. map over here. The world map over here. I'm comparing, it's the same thing at divergent scale, but now I'm comparing the number of deaths this past year in proportion to the population of each country. So what do I see? I see China's red, I see Argentina, Uruguay, and then some, some European countries. Now, why are these countries red? I'm going to look at China for a second. There's over 1.4 billion people living uh, in China, but almost 2 million have died there. What does that mean? Almost 20, like, it's weird because these are less than 1%. So it's like 20% of that 1% have died of cancer. Cancer is a big cause of death here. What's the big reason? Pollution. Smog. That's pretty, it's pretty bad, the, the air quality in China compared to other countries. And it's even worse to say that that's actually causing a lot of cancer. That, that might be one of the reasons that there's so many cancer cases there. So now, Going back to the lung cancer scenario, pollution here, we got tobacco in Argentina. We also have some lung cancer related, uh, lung cancer -related cases here in South America as well. But now there's Europe. Why are these European countries red? It goes back to the idea of the Northeast all the way up to the US now. The westernization idea. High amounts of reported cases of obesity smoking, alcohol. I think it's pretty interesting to really think that these African countries, when they're trying to become developed, want to model themselves after the US, England, these top countries. And at the same time, they're developing these westernization ideas. Oh, maybe it's a good idea that we start practicing selling alcohol or being able to uh, have tobacco be sold to different people, you know? So, basically, what I've done is I've looked at things I never would have seen when I go all the way back to these numbers. Remember, all these pictures that you saw, all these pictures that you saw are these numbers. So, what I've done is I've made images with these numbers and I was able to see things that I couldn't see. I saw the idea of westernization. I saw the idea of embryonic cancer. I saw the idea of there are more people dying of lung cancer than being diagnosed with prostate cancer. And this, my friends, is using Tableau as a data visualization tool to explore reoccurring cancer trends. Thank you very much. Society and the National Institute of Health gave me the data, it was a PDF file, about 100 to 150 pages. Oh, well, that was wonderful. Not really. Because Tableau doesn't accept PDF files. If you have an Excel file, if you have a Qualtrics file, if you have any sort of file that can be accepted, there are lots of files that are accepted by Tableau. And 
Once you have imported your file onto the Tableau software, it will take your charts and will give, just like it is on whatever Excel file, being able to prioritize that. Your numbers are values. Your headings are different regions. So for example, for the map, because this is pretty unique, I had to make sure that I had a column that says countries. And I make sure I have to have each country. So my Excel file would look like the countries column, the number of cases column, the number of people that, you know, the population, and then the percentage. If I didn't do that, this map wouldn't exist. It's very simple. The only difficult part about it is knowing how to format your files before you import it here. And in order to make these, you would have to have sheets. Sheets are basically taking just one portion, taking one portion, so I had to make this separate. I had to make my female thing, the female circle separate. Each thing had to be made with whatever sheet or whatever file you had before it could be combined into something as large as this. It's very simple. It was tedious for me because I had to convert all the PDF files to Excel files. But other than that, it's right. Oh, no. You, thank goodness, because that's what I'm taking for about through. But, any other questions? Do you want to look into the So, we have... So it says, almost 6,000 people have died of cancer this past year, while there's a 4.5 billion people living there. Now we could say that, man, to be honest, I don't know, I don't know what to say. Because what's interesting is it's an island far off from everywhere else. I mean, the only thing you can really copy is Australia. But did you see how blue Australia was? It's getting there, it's getting red. But it's not as red as the other country. Okay, you can't see it, but apparently there is a map, there is a country over here that has more deaths than its population, oh. which doesn't make sense. The Maldives. So apparently they reported that over it was about one percent. I don't know what the number was exactly. I can't even find the Maldives because it's so small. The map. But it actually reported that there were more people over time dying from cancer than, it's, than the size of the population. Yes, sir. Can you zoom into the Caribbean islands? I see some red in Cuba, and maybe there's some islands. So, some another great thing about this is I can take this little option. It's like a window. I don't know I'm going to go behind this uh, computer for a second now so I can maneuver it for you. It is very difficult sometimes to do that here. So you said the Caribbean. So we're going to zoom into this area right here. So, all I see is Cuba. Red. Looks like all the other countries are blue. So, we're seeing a 0.16% of the population dying from cancer. This is basically any cancer. Absolutely. This is reporting all types of cancer into one general, I guess, number. Any other questions, guys?